What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Plastic Arts Podcast, the show where we break down the video game news of the week. My name is Fonzie. I'm joined by my co-host, indie game dev extraordinaire and resident little creep, Gavin Jones. How's that? <laughs> so these are, once again, always segues into something else. Yeah, but, I do. Uh, <laughs> um, little you, creep. You didn't hear it was Joe Biden recently called uh, video game devs little creeps? Joe Biden. Yeah, yeah. He's been on this. He did this interview with, uh, with uh, Washington Post. And he like was talking about an interview or um, a roundtable he did where he talked to very Silicon Valley devs, uh, um, people in that industry, and he was talking about how uh, video game developers are little creeps for making games or making games that like teach you how to kill. Was one of his quotes. Um, I mean, this is another case of like this is why like Joe's like uh, again is just reiterating he's our drunk uncle at the picnic. Right. Like we don't really take what he says seriously anymore. No, it just it also just reiterates how he's out of touch. But also yeah. to call someone else a little creep, he's notorious for like for all the pictures right. on the internet of him touching girls and being weird with women. Yeah. But yeah, he's oblivious to that. Anyways, it was just kind of circled around people on, on Twitter were just tearing them apart. Um I just need to like this needs to be my new uh game dev uh character <laughs> little that, creep. Is, that is me yeah I'm a little it's creep. gotta be little creep so you can be like right. a rapper too well this actually goes with uh so <laughs> like little creep x or something my, my cousin so he made up this alternate character for me when i was starting to date again and uh the character was uh gavitron okay and uh, <laughs> i was gonna say a little creep because that doesn't work that no well. it was uh gavitron and gavitron's like this scummy like do you ever watch how i met your mother yeah, like yeah. Imagine the, Barney Stinson if he was terrible with women, but he's still <laughs> trying that hard all the time. Like, one of my techniques is like getting a girl like alone at a party and just like crying at her until she'll <laughs> sleep with me. So I feel like this this will continue my character as little creep, little creep, <laughs> Gavitron, just mentally breaking down these women so they're like, okay, Jesus just Christ, like for the like I don't I, my. <laughs> my self worth isn't worth it anymore. <laughs> like it's fine. Stop. Yeah. Well, it's one tactic, I guess. It's a little a little creep coming little at creep. you from uh, the podcaster. Mm-hmm. Little creep X. Your album's gonna drop soon, Gavin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's the, we already have the the song for it from Lonely Island. Do the creep. Oh yeah, I love Do that. the creep. I'll go down these Lonely Island uh, rabbit holes all the time. It's right, always crazy, like, like when you like a song of theirs will pop up on YouTube, and you're like, "Oh yeah, I should watch that." And they're like, "They make fucking good songs, yeah, some fucking bangers, and they're always funny." <laughs> like, yeah, they're awesome. I'm hoping they do something again soon. Yeah. How was your weekend? Busy. It was mm-hmm. busy. It was good. I played way the fuck too much Forger. Uh, it is. Yeah. So you told me about this game, but explain this more to me, or like your time now. Like, how many hours do you think you've put into this game so far? Uh, five. Okay, you were explaining this like I only I know that because the guy. achievements popped up. Like I remember when three popped up, and I'm like, three, <laughs> three hours. Gotcha. Where did where did the last two hours go? <laughs> so uh, it's easy to just dump yeah. time into the into the game. And it's so great because you can put this up, and for anyone uh, watching the footage of it, uh, you know, is gonna be like, how that? <laughs> you got it. Her? If you don't know what it is, you're like, how did you? And if you played it, and you're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, don't. <laughs> Don't, yeah, don't remind me. It does look like I remember watching a little bit of the footage. I can already tell the addicting part of it, where you're mining, where you're collecting, and so I can see where that could that could come yeah. up. But Which, I would like a bit more in depth, with like how you you can't really create in the game, right? You can't really like build or anything. There's not that aspect of it. I mean, you build stuff. So okay, closest thing I can compare it to. And again, I haven't played Minecraft, but I kind of compare it to Minecraft because sometimes I'll see streamers they're like taking their gold. You ore. haven't played Minecraft. No. What? And they're like <laughs> it's on everything it into to stuff, and then you turn that into other stuff. So I'm like building structures to build stuff to build more structures, um, and then I can explore. That's the cool thing is I can explore my world. I still You're can't. So upset, I like, still can't. Pro- no, I'm upset. I just can't understand how you would have not played it by now. Like I feel like you would love. Maybe you shouldn't because if you're talking right. about this being addicting. That's like that's like heroin compared to you just smoked your first cigarette. Like, do right. not go that direction. But it's awesome. I love Minecraft. I mean, I think the thing with Minecraft was like I I definitely missed the ship, and it was that point where I'm like, I no, should just let that. Right. I should just let the ship go into the sunset. Okay, and I'll never see it again. <laughs> it's still, and that's can, what I did with Forager, and then I and then I jumped on Forager, and I'm like, oh no, gotcha. Oh no. Well, I mean, 
yeah, if you really want to go down the rabbit hole, Minecraft is always there. But uh, mm-hmm. no, it's it's. A I feel like this is just as my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just kind of rabbit you know, holy. Break the scene, you know, with this, and then see how yeah. it goes with Minecraft. But no, yeah, and that's that's why I would uh, when I see this compared to Minecraft. At least you explain it to me. It's like I think I prefer the ability to create. That's always what brought me sure. to Minecraft. Sure. So if that a forager had more of that, maybe I'd be more interested in that. But it seems like with that <laughs> yeah. style, there's not much they can do with creating. You know. I can create stuff, but so far, like the enemies aren't challenging enough. Like that's the thing. Like mm. survival mode in survive uh, in uh, Minecraft, you are trying to survive the night. Yeah. Whereas this, the night comes, I'm like, oh, <laughs> scally. <laughs> I see. Farming I see. my fucking gold. <laughs> Never enough. You're just swatting gold. the enemies behind you. Yeah. Well, there is that Minecraft, uh, not the story mode. There's that Minecraft like uh, mm. top down thing they're working on i forget the name i'd of it. play it but it just looks like a good like i wonder uh, if this is a tabletop bridge to rpg gap. yeah we're not tabletop but a. do you remember the name of RPG? this because they announced no. it a little while ago i mean you get to say minecraft isometric dungeon crawler oh, i think it's called dungeon uh i think you're right yeah minecraft dungeons but see this is, seems like the name. upgrade uh <laughs> yeah yeah it seems like down that alley you know at least related to forager but um well i mean this is it's diablo gotcha and see diablo never diablo never clicked with me for some reason but you know the the thing with diablo for me and this is why i i think diablo and borderlands are so comparable is um especially borderlands one uh diablo i never had fun playing it Mm. i was like this is miserable this is grind yeah and then one day um you know andy and uh Billy, like they decided, they're like, "Hey, we're gonna get together at night and start playing Diablo," mm. and we had the fucking blast. <laughs> it's just like you're with your buddies, you're trying to steal each other's gold. Gotcha. Like you're kind of being dicks. You're occasionally helpful. It was just <laughs> a fun get together and do stuff. That's why, like, I think that's the redeeming quality in games like that. That Marvel, what you call it for the Switch? Yeah, Ultimate Alliance. I think. The yeah. One. Like it's not a fun game, but with people, right? That really carries it or adds the other side to that, comp- yeah. that other component. Yeah, I mean, one day maybe I'll play some Diablo, but like that, it, it, or it's even like remember when we played that weird like Contra like boss rush game? Oh yeah, on Switch. Yeah, like it was way harder with two people, but yes. I was still having fun. <laughs> yeah, it was way more chaotic, but it yeah. was fun. Yeah. yeah. So you played some Forger. Uh, Forger, mm-hmm. uh, did, did stuff with people and, um, did stuff with people. Gotcha. We, that makes it sound dirtier than it was. <laughs> uh, we watched that, uh, fraction of a fight. Yeah. The McGregor fight, it was 40 seconds. It ended in, so. it felt like 10 or it, it felt, was all the I would say up. 20. It felt like 20 seconds. Oh, the se- gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was 40 seconds. 40, man. Yep. Beat, beat that ass with a shoulder blade. <laughs> yeah. It was all the shoulder, uh, Oof. attack things, but, uh. Yeah, and that was fun too. But um, no, I didn't play any games really this weekend. Uh, yeah, just kind of doing stuff and doing stuff. Well, you had family over life. though. Had some family over, and then we did. Uh, we had an interview, and then just kind of editing that. that was and a stuff. good interview for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, because it's probably not up at this point. It is before. up. Oh, it's already mm-hmm. up. Yep. So if right. you haven't seen it, go watch it. It was with what's their Playfellow Play Studios. It was uh, Trace and Stu, yes. and they're both their their co owners of the studio there's one other um guy we didn't, we didn't get to talk to but mm-hmm. um yeah so they run play Fo- play fellow studios making fisty flops which fisty is that flops. cool party game featuring cats we still gotta uh, play that yeah i it can't wait fun. to once i get my controllers working we're gonna play that game yeah but fun interview go watch it awesome guys really fun you know what they did tease with me um and Teased. i told him like don't don't you know get my hopes up but it's like maybe we could work some kind of you know cool thing with making you guys into cats. And I'm like, oh my God, that'd be fucking <laughs> awesome. He's like, I, okay, think, I can't promise it. I think you can make you into a cat because you, you have put like some glasses the, on the, it or the something. Beard and the glasses like, what are you going to do That's besides kind of making the cats snoot big? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You know what? That's a cool idea. And then you get your cool little comb over and we'll get you uh, whatever, <laughs> some kind of dorky t-shirt or whatever but but that's really fun and i think for them like trying to like uh if they can find other influencers mm-hmm. um that are into the game doing stuff like that they do like it and especially uh you know if their community gets on board so yeah and that's a game where once you see it you're on board so it's just a matter of them spreading and getting enough eyes seeing it because you can already yeah. tell there isn't a whole elevator kind of pitch theme because you could just you see it and you're exactly you can tell it takes a whole second to understand that yeah game. <laughs> and if you don't like it you're an isis or something because it looks it looks hilarious <laughs> and awesome christ 
All right. Well, uh, speaking just... of, if you don't like it, you're nicest. <laughs> so I saw this video uh, this weekend, by the way, uh, that fucking tore me the shit up. Oh no. Uh, and I, if you can watch it without tearing up, okay. uh, you're you're a you're a T100 or whatever they are from yeah, Terminator. Yeah, T1000 Terminator. Uh, God, it was uh, so. There's this game uh, developer studio called uh, Butterscotch Shenanigans, uh, who I hate <laughs> that name because it's hard to say. It's kind of dope though. <laughs> And uh, they just made like mobile games and fun little games, yeah. and uh, and there's this really cool. And I kind of knew of the story, but like watching this post mortem, which really I sh- it should be honestly it should be called an anti post mortem. But it was a GDC talk. Mm. Uh, one of the lead developers there, um, he uh, they were working on this mobile infinite runner game, and he found out he had super fucking cancer. Whoa! And on uh, so and he's just he he's working on this game with his brother and he's like, I'm not, this is not the last game I make. I'm not, I will not let this. I see. So he just made basically his kind of dream game, his, his last hurrah. And like, like it's so heart wrenching, like the cancer goes away and then it comes back worse and then it goes away again. And then it comes back (laughs) worse. Like this dude's just yo-yoing in and out of life, like trying to make this game just like as his escape. Yeah. Like it was his only thing. And I remember hearing that like when he I like somebody told me when he was starting that develop, it's like, yeah, he's dying. He's he's going to die. Mm. So this is just his last game. This is when you want to make him like that's awesome. Wow. Like what like that's that's I mean that's sad, right? Yeah. But that's like as a game developer, that's that's like I can't I can't imagine like having this being, you know, right. my my last thing I say. And uh he did eventually get all the way cured awesome which and like he he was tearing up and like i'm tearing up watching is he the giving thing. the the story of the speech the gdc talk yeah and it's gotcha. it's incredible it's like an hour long but i encourage everyone to watch it it'll break your heart that it sounds was, it was so human awesome just watching yeah it was incredible it was barely about the game development which is funny <laughs> well but no and the story is there for right right yeah the story behind the scenes so that's why it should be called like a post-mortem is what people call when they talk about the development process right. this should be called the anti-postmortem yeah <laughs> that's awesome especially with like you 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 mentioned that with the with uh being a dev it's like you're creating uh a message that you want to say but you never really think about this being your last thing right. that you're going to leave imprint on the world so but that that was what he was facing in that yeah. kind of thing Wow, that's really cool. What was the was, name of the game he ended up developing? Uh, I'm gonna mess this up because um, it's it wasn't it's it's very similar to Forager. It's like mm. a or like a Don't Starve, and he actually brings that up is like when they were nearing the end of it, they're like, "Holy shit!" There's like five games like this, and we don't stand out. Uh, so they had to deal with that when he was again going into his like I think third bout of like they just lock you in a room and pump you full of drugs for yeah, a couple of weeks. The chemo stuff. Um, and. Uh, yeah, they were just like, we don't stand out at all. Um, but I think it was called something Crashlands, Super Crashlands. Um, maybe not Super, but if you type in Crashlands, I'm sure it'll yeah, let me it'll pop so up what it's called. Crashlands. Crashlands on Steam. Oh, it's literally just called Crashlands. Yeah, gotcha. it's got a really cute art style. Oh, they made it to Switch. Yeah. Last year. Nice. That's awesome. Incredible story. Yeah. No, I will definitely watch that. And it's an actual, like, a GDC branded talk. Yeah, it was GDC gotcha. talk. I mean, there's like thousands of those if you go to their website. Yeah. But this one, yeah, that'll... Crashlands GDC. Gotcha. Yeah, if you don't cry watching that, <laughs> you are a T-1000. Yeah, <laughs> T-1000 in ISIS. Yeah. Um, nice, Gavin. Well, we have some uh, news we can we can cover this week. Uh, a lot of delays. That's really the, the name of the game for this this whole week. Uh, so something today. I did notice, um, uh, I think uh, Polygon, they didn't really point it out, but it was in their article. They mm-hmm. mentioned... Uh, Dead whatever two D- dying, light. dying light two is delayed um, I- indefinitely. Yeah, I want to bring cool. that up with you too. I wonder yes. if the messaging is we can uh, be like picking apart or like or you know uh, falling too much into detail, but I, uh, the messaging I think is is important. Or I wonder what's in there with with not just saying like hey we're giving six mm-hmm. months later, but we're actually going indefinitely and not giving an actual set right. date. What does that mean behind the scenes? I don't know, but I I feel like we can we can pontificate on that. We hope good things. So uh, I pulled uh, from IGN a lot of the work there. Their various uh, editors, Matt Perslow, Chris Priestman, Matt Kim, they uh, profile all the different like um, really big uh, delays that happened starting last week and into today, actually. 
But uh, one of the bigger ones is Iron Man VR. That's a uh, first-party uh, VR game featuring Iron Man. Um, it's a Sony first-party game. They delayed that um, to May 15, 2020. That was one of the bigger ones? Uh, as far as it's 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 looped in there, it's looped into the big ones. But I'm I'm, bu- I'm going up, building up. I'm building Sorry, up. that was a lot of sass. <laughs> You're like what? Um, yeah. So that's uh, the Tony Stark Simulator was originally due to release on February 28th, which is super duper soon, and they pushed it back to May. So not what two months, one month. That's not the end of the world, but right. it is pushed a little bit further. Uh, then we got Final Fantasy VII remake was delayed. So the Final Fantasy VII remake is delayed from March 3rd to April 10th. While the upcoming Avengers game is bumped from May to September, publisher Square Enix said this morning in a statement, Final Fantasy VII Remake producer Yoshinori Katasi said the game's delay was for extra polish. So the same, uh, same publisher, Square Enix. Um, so they, they wrapped those two announcements in one. I, um, I, I think the crazy thing about this to me with the Final Fantasy VII Remake is years and years and years ago, Sony said they will never make a Final Fantasy VII Remake because making all that stuff in the ne- into like current gen at the time, it was like PlayStation 3, high mm-hmm. fidelity artwork was just too much work. And they yeah. finally broke down and they're doing it. And clearly, even with these people that have been making these games for years, you know, hitting good deadlines, it's still too much work. Yeah. That, yeah. And they even changed the model where it's like, okay, we're going to give you episodes instead of like right. one honking game. And still, that's already it. That's a lot to do. So. Um, but yeah, it seems like they're, especially with the, what they've announced with Final Fantasy VII, they're really fleshing it out. And it's like a full, right. almost new game. So, mm-hmm. so I, they push Basically, it's going to be, yeah, like one disc is going to be... Whew. Right. I th- well, is it this one that released on two? I forget, we know we covered it, but there's there's they're changing even that too. We're like, just for the I first part, right. yeah. it's on two discs. Um, so yeah, and then uh, today we got uh, Dying Light Two was announced that it's that it's being pushed indefinitely, just like you said. So posted on Twitter, a statement from CEO Powell Mar- Marchuka said, "quote We were initially aiming for a spring 2020 release with Dying Light Two, but unfortunately, we need more t- development time to f- fulfill our vision. We will have more details to share in the coming months, and we'll get back to you as soon as we have more information." Um, what's interesting is that they don't give a new date; they just say, "We're working on it." Yep. It's um, important. This one, and I think this this information is important compared to uh, the Cyberpunk 2077 news mm-hmm. where they uh, ended up pushing it, what, like six months, five months ahead. Mm-hmm. So this is uh, this was, uh, mid-week last week. Cyberpunk 2077 has been delayed from its April release to September 17, 2020, CD Projekt Red announced. Um, they were able to push this down the line um, with, with Dying Light devs. They just kind of left that open a bit. Yeah. Um, what do you think behind the scenes? So, I mean, uh, there's a lot of talk with, for the last five years, like once we hear, I think overall collectively, once we hear that a game is pushed back, everyone kind of breathes a sigh of relief where it's like, okay, the devs can kind of, yeah. they can focus a bit more, less crunch. But really that might mean yeah. more crunch when they have to push these games forward. Right. And that was kind of the article. Uh, wh- and we'll talk about that in a second. One thing I just like really love to touch on here. Uh, so Cyberpunk's launch. There were several really high-profile, fantastic games going to be launching right around that. I remember yeah. we were saying, you're sent to die. <laughs> These games were sent to die. Now, now they got some room. They're they're set up to succeed. Yep. Like, yep. <laughs> I think the only they look thing... dumb before. <laughs> they look dumb now. <laughs> well, I know around that window was Last of Us 2, and that still hasn't been pushed. I mean, it was pushed a couple months ago. Yeah. Um, oh, no, you know what? That's Was that pushed to that February? Was pushed. That was pushed. Yeah, so that's, that's out of that window anyways. I remember you were surprised because you thought it was pushed like a month, but it was actually pushed like three months. A good months. amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that I mean, it's good for gamers to get their 2020 shuffled around a bit because it was looking pretty rough where all these like yeah. high-profile games were releasing around each other. Um, but I like the conversation of, or I find it interesting, there's more folds in this whole thing where we used to think, okay, like when they can actually push the game forward, they're giving their devs more more um, space to kind of work on the game, but really they're crunching already to get to the point where they have to figure out if they're going to have to delay or not, right? There's like an mm-hmm. end time where they have to say, if we don't reach this goal, then we have to push it back. So they're already crunching to get to there. Now this means they have to keep crunching to get to that new goal, po- goal post. Yeah. So it's, but then it's like, you want to support these devs for pushing the game forward, but then you're still, they're still crunching. So it's like, as a gamer, what do you do? I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's tough to know how to like lend your support mm-hmm. when, when they're still crunching, you know what I mean? Like, and you have no say no, on it. Nothing you can do. Right. It's just a bummer. Give it, give a dev a back rub. 
Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> now, would you say they could hire more people? But th- does that fix the problem? Does that what does that do? No, I mean, more people doesn't necessarily fix problems on games. Mm. Like, there's a certain point where it does. Sure. Um, but there's also, and they they already do that already. Like, you look at uh, all the from software games. One of the big things they do is like, yeah, they have their core team working on stuff, and they just outsource art. Gotcha. Out the wing way. Yeah. Um. Does that maybe alleviate some of the workload on the core team so they can yeah, kind of absolutely. go home at normal hours or whatever? Yeah. Well, I, I hope so. I, I mean, would, we. Yeah. it's one of those things where I, I feel like um, I know so little about Japanese development. I think it's a cultural thing, too, where they maybe uh, favor working super hard. And, and I think that's a different thing in the Western world. We're trying to sure. change it actively. I don't know if it's something different over there, but I've heard stories you know, going back years where, yeah, there was, it was an honor to just work as much as you can and sacrifice everything. But we realized, or we're realizing now it's like, that's maybe not the healthiest way to go about it. Right. Um, if you want to, you know, yeah, live so, till past 60 or whatever. Right. And then, uh, what, what adds the folds to that conversation was recently Jason Schreier of Kotaku added this, um, created this, um, article showcasing how it's made more complicated than we think, uh, his article was video game delays cause more crunch. And I won't read right. word for word, but uh, he breaks down the the way that crunch will already naturally happen, and then like it will it will keep happening with yeah. uh, having to push a, a game further down. We're only seeing the the public, uh, you know, the actual the notices on Twitter, but really behind the scenes, I'm sure they're crunching yeah. away just to get to the point where they can decide if they have to push it. Right. And the thing they they kind of lightly touched on too is uh, CD Projekt Red is historically a crunch monster. And a yeah. bad one at that. So this, they're going to be a crunch monster again. I know they said they're trying to work on it, but that's the thing. So a couple months ago, they met, they announced that they were going to try to curb some of those things with crunching, but I don't know if that's really the reality of it. Yeah. But yeah, I wonder like, how do you get rid of this then? Do you, you can't throw more people at it or you can, but that doesn't necessarily fix the problem. Do you just extend it another year? But then right. the reality with these triple A titles is they have, um, they have a uh, financial investors that want to mm-hmm. see uh, a return on their investment. Right. So when they think of like years and quarters, they don't want to see on paper that this game is pushed another year. So they're having that stuff on top of them, the devs anyways, to like that pressure to make sure that game is, is uh, sees a light of day. But then the devs suffer from it. But it's like, yeah. how do you fix that? The the thing I was kind of thinking about with it today, and, and I also loved at the very bottom of that article, he kind of mentioned, he's like, yeah, crunch sucks and some people will willingly do it. I mean, it does... See, yeah. Project Red mentioned that, like, in that country, you legally get paid more for doing overtime, which is not a thing in America, oh. which is bullshit. So you're working, you know, 20 plus extra hours a week and making no more money, which is not fair. Really? Oh, yeah. I, I did not know that was a thing. But, yeah, it's a huge thing. Okay. Um, you know, you know, sometimes more than 20 more hours a week. So you're working, you know, 70 hour weeks. But uh, where was I going with it? Um. The, well, prob- the, fa- the problem is, is uh, I think people and investors try and treat uh, video games like they're movies because that's the closest amalgamation people really have to sure. them. But they're not movies. They're not. I think they they share a lot in terms of with plays. They're not plays. They're they're their own thing, and it's messy and it's ugly. Yeah. And there's so much unexpected. Even when you pad out and plan for the unexpected to happen. Oftentimes that's not enough. Sure. It's, it's almost like, you know, trying to, you know, to a certain degree, it's almost like trying to plan out, you know, releasing, having an artist, like a really talented musician plan out releasing an an album in a year. It's like, all right, what if, yeah, which is different. That's a whole different, but I think it's, it's almost comparable. It's just like, you're going to have hitches. You can have, you know, too many people bearing down on with, and then you end up with, you know, uh lasers by uh what's his name oh dang uh, uh, uh no Wiz Khalifa but uh that's that, yeah. why were, I was thinking Wes Khalifa too but I'm like I don't even <laughs> no, know what Wes Khalifa, Khalifa looks like so I don't even know if they no uh, damn it but you're right uh, there's a kick push guy uh yeah. what, shit Lupe Fiasco Lupe, there, there we go. go damn I was gonna get there yeah what was here now I've forgotten who we originally said uh Wiz Khalifa <laughs> their names don't even sound alike <laughs> Wiz Laser Khalifa syllables and that's it uh but so it's it like I don't I don't know it's like one of those things where you know you can't rush it but you have to rush it right uh, you have to work with intention bugs are gonna happen delays are gonna happen there's bugs there's changes in like creative vision or they work on a mechanic that isn't fun after a while they realize yeah. that it's not fun 
or sometimes you push through it, then you you crack the nut on what makes it fun way late in the game, like say like God of War with the uh, throwing the axe. I feel like uh, in one of the no clip things they talk, or no their own their own doc, they talk about how they like they nailed that down way at the end of development. Right. But they could have just dropped that. But that's a key component of the game. Right. I don't know. Do you need like financial investors that are that know enough? of the the way the cookie crumbles the like the dev process to give them the time i mean it's definitely management i but i think mm. it's I, I think the better point to what i was saying is there's nothing like this in the world there isn't no you there's mentioned nothing. like making a movie what if in, with a movie you you hire your actors you go on location you film mm. it what if you had to create the location and create the actor. I mean, they do. That's but, what they do with video games. But with a with a with a movie, you go, okay. So how big is this? All right. So we need to hire this many people to work on the set. Sure. That's going to cost this much money. We can, you know, do this to speed it up. All that's there. There's people for that, and can yeah. get it done on time. Like the only time, really, that you have delays, it seems, with movies, is if there's a creative problem, like Suicide Squad. We're like, oh, we're going to refilm this to make yeah. it not shit. That was our bad from the get go. But this is. Or there's somebody gets hurt, like there's that cowboy right. bebop Netflix one with like John Cho. I want to say he's gonna play the main guy. Yeah, have you, you ever heard of that? So it's been delayed because he I got hurt. I don't care about cowboy bebop. Oh, okay. I hear it's good. It's a huge I'm probably anime. gonna like it. I'm gotcha. probably gonna like it. But it sounds cool. But yeah, but he got hurt, and so they had to delay the production. But Netflix. no, yeah, you're right. And so there's there's uh, oh god, where, where were we uh, mentioning before? Um, just with like that whole process, it's like all these things can happen and extend the time. But uh, it's it's a uh, that's what I say that with video games it's a relatively new art form. If you're comparing to movies too, we have a lot of time and experience, and you know yeah. what the key grip does, and the the, the you know like uh, all these different like um, positions in making a movie, yeah. and it's pretty much you know cut and dry. Even with like CG and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. at this point it's cut and dry. Uh, with with games, it's still such a newer uh, medium. And then you have like the Naughty Dog style, Rockstar style of like the motion capture and the performances yeah. that adds all these different extra levels to it, where it's. It's tough. And yeah. you look at what uh, CD Projekt Red's trying to do with this huge nut sci-fi world that seems like that's what's insane that they even put a release date on this thing because it looked like, oh, we're never going to play that because it looks so right. bombastic and you know hard to pull off. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's a bummer. We don't, I don't want to see any devs like just have to bear the weight of this. Uh, I wonder how we can, in the years, we can figure out how to, how to switch this model. I don't know how you tackle that beast. I, I was told, and I don't know if this is still uh, true, but so when I went to DigiPen, we were we were in this uh, Nintendo building where the people had made, like, uh, in, in one of the sides of the building, they made, like, Mario Super Strikers, and mm. I think they made Wave Race for GameCube. They made uh, several notable titles, yeah. Um, and I think they were known for never crunching. And I thought they said the reason they did it is just really, 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 really good planning. And so hmm. maybe it's possible. Yeah. Maybe if you plan it. I think actually on that kind of note, I watched another thing that was very poignant this weekend, which was a no clip documentary on the development of Dream Daddy. And oh, one I'm of the things that. That, that happens later on is they ran into a crunch problem because they, gotcha. they said they were uh, going to release on a set day. And this is these people's first time doing this. Yeah, because it's an indie developer. Yeah, on that. like you need a lot of experience going into these things, and especially with AAA, you need a lot of experience with a lot of AAA talent. Which AAA yeah. talent, like not everyone's cut out for AAA. Um, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I wonder as the as the medium gets older, then are we going to get more aged veteran devs that can then become those manager positions? Because I mentioned you mentioned that it's you a manager so. issue where you have these people that aren't adept to tell the road signs, like oh, we're actually we're way behind or we're you know, not on track, but you have more people that have been in the industry long enough, they can fill those roles and actually say like, hey, I actually know that we're on track or that we're not on track. And maybe that can kind of right. fix the problem eventually. It's it's possible. Unfortunately, I think this this kind of digs into a mindset that I don't like. And I feel like it's very popular in America is that if you stick around in a company long enough, you should become something higher. You should become a CEO. Sure. You should become like people aren't always cut out for that. And a lot of people get thrown into roles that they're not to being a leader is in, in a lot of ways, something you're born with. You can learn it, mm. but there, there are a lot of people that are born leaders and they can run this shit. And if you're yeah. a born leader that maybe started off as a developer, can work your way there. Or maybe you just know how to take care of your people. Probably it's right. It's, it's rare. We're asking for something rare in mass and in every studio right you know, for them to find that right person or right and, group and they're being told they can't be fair at the same time like yeah. it's 
Uh, it's tough. And I wonder also at the very top where you have these like financial um, investors, if you get more devs that are rich as fuck and they're the ones putting the bill, maybe they understand more and they can allow them more time or be willing to put more time in. Right. Say like the, um, what's the uh, famous guy who's done, um, he's done Psychonauts, he's done- uh, Tim Shaver. Yeah, so like that caliber is like, hey, I'm a dev and I'm super rich. And so I right. know when I put my money, I can give them enough in enough time to like figure it out. He's also kind of poor though when he makes these games because when you look at and it's it made fantastic in uh, the the documentary they did some stuff with Broken Age, uh, they had their money at the very get go, mm. and it's really interesting um, having them in a room together. They've got all these little cards. They're setting them up on this whiteboard, parceling out every single bit of the money. Okay, from the get go, so they know where this is going. A lot went into music. All this stuff going over here. It was all planned, and that was fascinating. Like, we know we have shit for money, yeah. so let's do that. Um, so it's, yeah. It's a complicated issue. I mean, I don't know how you're going to solve it. But at the very least, it's it's still good, although it doesn't solve the problem. It's, it's still good to see these games push forward or, you know, push yeah. the release date forward. Uh, I, know, I understand now that it means they're still crunching, but at least it gives them more time to... Um, cause if you think of the devs behind the scenes, it's like, they care about what they're doing. They want to still put out a quality product. So right. at least they have the more, they have more time to do that. I just wish we could, and that's going to be a problem that's going to, it's going to take years to really, and that the industry right. itself has going to, is going to have to change and shift to solve those problems. It's also one of those ones going slightly back to movies for a second. What will happen if game devs unionize? Cause that has just right. never been the thing and movies have been unionized for a very long time. They have, and there's still multi, I mean, billion dollar movies, mm-hmm. multi million dollar movies, production wise, that still recoup their investment. Right. And so, and they're unionized. You're right. So there's, there's, there's a way to do it. Cause I understand the, some of the arguments against unionizing in, uh, in games is that it's going to be created, it's going to make it way more, it's already an expensive process. It's going to make right. it way more expensive. As it should be, though. And as it should be. And I know that there's a right. hurdle we'll have to get through, but there's the movie industry has shown us that it's possible. Yeah. I, I imagine there's still issues with that, too, but there's always going to be issues. Well, movies also cost more to watch than they used to. Like, games have never changed. I think they need, yeah. I, I'm still, even though that sucks and I don't want to pay it, looking yeah. at a game like a Cyberpunk, that's a game you can easily charge 70, 80, 100 bucks. I, I think bucks. 100 is fair. Right? I thought that was Red Dead 2. It's like you can charge that and it, even though that's that fair. sucks, you go, yep, I understand. Because right. that game is nuts. Like you can play that forever. And maybe only those 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 uh, AAA games, those those top tier games can offer that price. But does hopefully that offsets the cost or gives those financial investors that lets them uh, gets them off the ass more of the dev of the publisher and gives them right. more time to work on it. I wonder. Yeah. Um, with Dying Light 2, we talked about how, I mean, they pushed that indefinitely, so there's no release date mm-hmm. now. But they're also, I just rewatched the E3 videos about it, um, the last one for 2018. They're trying to do a lot with this new game. Yeah. Um, so they're, they announced how that, that storyline is going to fracture where you can follow these different storylines and change the environment, change the structure of what's going on based on the mm-hmm. factions that you would line with. It's a pretty big, uh, you know, improvement from the from Dying Light One. So yeah. they're trying to do something pretty innovative. My my concern as well with that delay is like, what if it's so with Dream Daddy they had they were almost at the release, they were cramming, they could maybe get something out, but they're like, this is kind of bad. Mm. So like, what if they made all this shit? Yeah, and it's like, oh fuck. I don't see how it's bad because the bare bones is still Dying Light, it's still that same engine. And that whole process is still it's fun. It's definitely not the same engine. Like that's that's a new engine. I think that's actually how they got the uh, the writer because they're like, look at this crazy thing we can do. We're mm. changing the whole world. Well, watching the footage, it looks the same. I mean, I would say it's still improved upon, but I would say it's the same engine. Looking at how it runs, how Maybe, the game functions. Yeah. But is it? Are they still working under the hood on that? For sure, I would imagine. Yeah. It still blows my mind. Uh, I for whatever reason I thought uh, Dying Light One was on like. PlayStation 3 and like Xbox no. 360. Yeah. But yeah. And I remember because it ran fantastic on my computer. Um, that game still looks fantastic. Looks to really this good. Day. And they kept supporting it. Kept They added vehicles eventually. Like they kept adding all these different, um, not storylines, but like these different expansion packs to it. Yeah. So that game came out. It was one you of the first. Multiplayer. It, there is multiplayer, right? Yeah. I, I think like you is. can play the whole story. Multiplayer. Wow. Okay. Co op. That's dope. I remember that uh, it came out when the PlayStation 4 was pretty new it was one of the big games to come out where there wasn't there was this window of nothing and they dropped this i want to say it was like january february and it just like lit up because they they cracked this right time frame where there was just nothing to compete with it so i remember getting that right when i got my ps4 and i just got sucked into it i need to beat it i've i don't know anyone that didn't like it 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you look at the trailers and you're not into that gameplay, okay, then you wouldn't yeah. like it. But if you, if that, you know, tickles your fancy, I mean, you're going to love that game. Yeah. Well, one thing I actually don't like about that game, though, and I think it's a good thing for that game and they should keep it, but running around at night is just so scary. It, it is. And yeah. It, it, the game <laughs> wants you to do it, though. It's like, hey, you can get like this if you can run around right. at night for like two minutes. And I'm like, it's scary out there, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Like, yeah, that's the whole point. But uh, I think eventually I got so, not overpowered, but I was confident enough where I could at least run and I knew that I could stay away. But would I stay and fight them? No, but I would would keep running around. And they nailed that parkour combat. I'm a big fan. So we'll see what happens with that. But... The uh, I wonder what's gonna you know be delayed this week. We'll see. What's what's still in the dock? It's still in the pipeline. Is we what? have Doom Two is still two months away. Yeah, and I mean, that was pushed back because hell, was even holiday. Borderlands uh, DLC got oh, pushed did back. It? Yeah, whoa, Dang. for an event. Yeah, everything and got. There's also um, it's a Switch exclusive uh, Animal Crossing that that's coming out, and that's still apparently on the on the horizon, and that date hasn't changed. But I want to say that was around that Doom Two. Nintendo, I don't feel like does too much. Yep. Well, that was a. Yeah. We will see. We're not going to solve today. So. Yeah. So uh, I know you're a big Fortnite fan, Gavin. Um, but uh, so they're merging the world of Fortnite, which you love, I and the world of TikTok, which you also love. So I wanted to get your take I on do, this. I do love those Chinese spying apps. That's, uh, <laughs> I don't know if this one does that, but uh, TikTok apparently, yeah, it's it's, it's spying on you while you're doing the flossing and stuff. Oh yeah. God damn it! I'm never safe. Um, so a new Fortnite TikTok challenge gives players the chance to create an official emote. Gavin, this is from uh, IGN. Andrew Smith so writes, trying to do a new floss dance. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to not pay one for a new, not pay someone for a new uh, yeah. dance that they can copyright. Uh, Epic Games has announced a partnership with TikTok that will give players a chance to create an official Fortnite dance emote. The competition is simple. Players will need to post a video on TikTok, TikTok using the hashtag emote royale contest showcasing the original Fortnite dance. At the end of the contest, Epic will select a winner and create an in-game email based on their submission. Further, the winning dancer will also receive 25,000 V-Bucks, not cash, and Fortnite prize pack with over $400 in Fortnite toys and swag. Um, I find it interesting that they're not paying anyone, just like they didn't pay the original dancers for the, like, the Carlton dance that's in there. Yeah. Um, so they're still not paying you, but I guess you're getting some cool V-Bucks, but... Yeah. So, any interest in uh, in cause what would what would be the dance you'd submit to one of these uh, to this Fortnite thing? Do you have your go-to dance? You kind of whip out on the floor when you. I mean, I can dance. I don't think I have anything like emo worthy. Though. You don't have your go-to like Gavin shuffle or <laughs> whatever the hell. To the left, to the <laughs> left, to the. Uh, Just trying to think. Yeah, what would you yeah, whip out? I don't. I don't think I have any meme worthy. Mm. I think you do. Dance? I think you got something in you. I can just dance though. That's my thing. Like, I'm not. I'm not. It's bad just at the, it. the 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 awkward. We'll call it the Gavin awkward. Hey, Gavin can can bust a move. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to see. You see. Actually, I, I think TikTok. I think I tamed it down when we out uh, we went out dancing. What was it? 70s, 90s night or whatever. Yeah. I reeled it back. <laughs> I want to see full force. Gavin letting loose. Take the pants off. Hey, and just... <laughs> well, in addition to the Fortnite uh, TikTok news, TikTok news. Uh, Epic recently announced its new icon series, which will be kicking off by partnering with popular Fortnite streamer Tyler Ninja Blevins to bring a custom ninja skin to the item shop. Did you How see this? That never been a thing, right? You until think now? Yep, it's you, been years. Yeah, because <laughs> I think it's, especially I was thinking about this recently with 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 the rise of Fortnite and the rise of Ninja. They're really they're two in the same. It's like yeah. I think what helped Fortnite rise was Ninja, but also vice versa. Mm, mostly vice versa. Well, he was a big streamer that like popularized. Fortnite, I want to say, like it, you could still have Fortnite at the level that it is now without Ninja for sure. But yeah. I feel like they're linked where it's like I don't know how you could remove them from each other. I, I think part of the thing is, yeah, he helped later on, but it was kind of like Fortnite took off and he was really good at it, so he got popular. And then he had the opportunity to play with Drake, which launched yep. him into the stratosphere. Yep. So and then you know everyone came out and saw him, so then that helped. That's true. But he had. So which also launched Fortnite into the stratosphere more. Like yes, that's the, I think they feel like they really think of another streamer, and you you're more uh, familiar with these uh, very streamers. Another streamer that's like just that's just coincides with a game to the point like that Ninja does. That happens Fortnite. all the time, though. Does it? Okay. Yeah, like you think, uh, you know, you even disrespect. It's like he's known for PUBG, but not to the levels I think that Ninja's with Fortnite. I feel like he's kind of 
yeah. on his own lane. But. It's also kind of funny when, like, I think back to the time where uh, Ninja was small, smaller. Like, you mm. think 2000, 3000. Who's a ninja? And him and, uh, him and Dr. Disrespect used to play together. Really? And uh, Dr. Disrespect would be so shitty to him, and he'd just put up with it. <laughs> Like I, it's like when you hold your little brother and he's trying to swing yeah. at you. You just hold his hand. I, I do remember there was one time where like Doctor Doctor Disrespect just went off on him, and it was, I mean, it was kind of Ninja's fault, but also he blew up way too hard. Like it was an inappropriate level of blow up, and Ninja oh. just like raged left. And he's it was like, like a fight on stream or something. Yeah, it was. Oh. It was. Uh, um, Ninja was like trying to tell him where a guy was, but he was yelling so hard he couldn't hear the gunshots. Oh. So he got him killed. He probably he probably could have got the guy in one. Uh, but he didn't because he couldn't hear over Ninja. And then he just fucking blew the hell up on him. Jeez. Just screaming at him. He's just like, dude, fuck this. This is <laughs> bullshit. Like, this is not worth. Yeah. And I think they were playing together like a month later. But gotcha. it was still just like, it's crazy to think like back then he kind of had to eat that shit. <laughs> and now and he now he, d- <laughs> he calls the shots. Doesn't even have to read the chat. <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, was that back when Dr. Disrespect, did he still have that? That uh, character, or was he? I think he's always kind of had the character. Oh, okay. I think I, I want to say at one point he said he maybe tried to do something on YouTube, but that was that was kind of his thing. Is he launched his Doctor Disrespect? Gotcha. Uh, it's neat to see like he was kind of out of character once when he did, and I loved it. Uh, was a, a developer stream where he was taking Call of Duty tools and trying to make levels because he used oh, to be okay. a Call of Duty level maker. Oh, uh, I so I that. think he made Nuketown. What? Or he worked on Nuketown. I'm, okay. I'm sure there's many people that worked he on Nuketown. He walked by while the devs but yeah, he was. Yeah, I think he was in Blops 1 or 2 or whatever. I think gotcha. 1. And so he used to work on that. So it was neat seeing him do some game dev. Did I know uh, that? But also got very impatient very quickly. And it's like, well, I can you? <laughs> <laughs> trying to tell you, t- buddy, it's tough trying to develop and be yeah. entertaining <laughs> while you're streaming. Yeah, you but, would know. Uh, yeah. Go find that interesting. TikTok. So. I'm not going to submit any of myself, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. China uh, needs to know about your data, though. <laughs> yeah, there. I already have. To know. Russia already has my face from whatever that face old aging app thing that went popular. So now China mm-hmm. has my dance moves. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn, Gavin is coming to PC. Reports say. Fuck yeah! <laughs> now, I'm not sure still... my PC can run it. No, it can't. But <laughs> yeah, there's games where you have to stare at the floor just to get everything rendered, so you're not going to be able to. Play to be it. fair, that's that game's fault. I have my PC is more powerful than your PlayStation Four. Okay. But these people optimize this shit badly. So gotcha. gotcha. Well, we'll see, Gavin. At me. I'm playing Horizon Zero Dawn with no oh, issues. Have to do with it, Bethesda actually added me. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, oh shit! I didn't mean it. <laughs> The SWAT team comes through. <laughs> oh, no. um, so this is still uh, rumors, but it's uh, it's getting enough traction where like outlets like IGN are talking mm-hmm. about. So Matt Kim from IGN writes, according to sources familiar with Sony's plans, Horizon Zero Dawn will be coming to PC sometime in the future. Kotaku is reporting that three people familiar with Sony's plans that the PlayStation 4 exclusive from Guerrilla Games will be coming to the PC. This is not an official announcement, and the sources spoke anonymously because they were not allowed to d- divulge this information. Uh, so they go on further. This would be the first Sony exclusive game to be a first party Sony worldwide studios kind of to come to PC. Uh, now to, to bring it, come out of the, the, the article there that we, they had actually announced with Death stranding that that is a, that's coming to PC, but that's not a first party. They don't own yep. Kojima productions. Um, but now back in there, uh, back in the article, this is not the first Sony exclusive to be coming to PC. However, as quantic dreams games are on the PC and Death stranding will be coming to PC later this year. Um, Kotaku is reporting that Horizon Zero Dawn will be on both stream and the Epic's Game Store, though this is not finalized. Uh, it's interesting to see Sony, if this is true, okay. starting to allow, for whatever reason, their properties to be on PC. Why would you imagine that would be a good move? I don't really fully understand Guerrilla Games' relationship with Sony. Well, they're first party for sure, right? But uh, there was a, the, the president of Guerrilla Games, he's working like... Second party, maybe? I is, don't even know. Is he what? They, they might be second party. I, I feel like they're first party. Um, I'm going to Google this. God damn it. Is that the Cupid Shuffles? That they yeah, it's <laughs> it's up in my brain. Uh, super dude. I mean, I would love, though, if we could get a kill zone on PC. Okay. Because those games are some of, like... Multiplayer in Killzone is some of the tightest, like, shooting action. Um, so it was sold to Sony uh, in 2005. So it is a first-party uh, Sony studio. Mm. Um, now, they were able to not poach, but, like, the, the president of, of uh, Guerrilla Games 
left to a uh, senior role in, in, in uh, PlayStation itself. I forget the actual role here, but uh, as president of Sony Interactive uh, America. But um, oh. yeah, anyway, so yeah, he's a, he's a first, it's a first party uh, Did you see they made a Dizzy's Candy Quest? They, did they? <laughs> yeah, scroll down. Gorilla Games? Yeah. Oh, back when it was called Lost Boys? Oh, right. when the devil was called Lost Boys. For Game Boy Color. What? Nice. Oh my God, Dizzy. That was the egg. I that remember was the that one. Fucking egg. I'm gonna Google this here. <laughs> I'm thinking the egg that's. <laughs> oh shit! I have no idea. This fucking egg. Do you play as an egg, or what do you do as an egg? Oh, it was sorry. This is candy. Uh, this is uh, Tiny Tunes. Okay. That was dizzy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> was that the Was that the Tasmanian Devil? character um is dizzy a ca- hmm, i don't know tiny tunes was great dude uh i vaguely remember playing uh there's like a sega saturn game with tiny tunes but um uh, i remember the cartoon yeah this is like a knockoff uh tasmanian devil dizzy yeah interesting i mean i guess that may- it makes sense though but is that uh you that that popped up when you saw that was that near and dear to your heart the dizzy no, I was thinking of a different game. I just uh, thought the okay. name was Goofy, and then I was like, oh, I think it's that guy with the, the platformer with the egg, but apparently not. Gotcha. Um, yeah, but I, I'm super hyped. I hope it happens. I don't know why it would happen. Uh, it doesn't really make sense, but I would love it. Yeah, I wonder, you want to keep, what do you think from Sony's perspective, that you want to keep these uh, titles exclusive just because that keep, brings more people to the PlayStation platform, but is it safe maybe when it, with an older game, why don't you keep making money by releasing it on PC? And just you know, do well, that. Well, by right. that logic, release it on Switch, Sony. Release it. On, <laughs> I don't know if <laughs> you want to make buckets of money. Does your Switch just melt when you load this and try to <laughs> yes. run it on your game? You gotta put like the Breath of the Wild shaders on it to make it work. <laughs> that could be that could be dope. Yeah, I don't think you could do the. I mean, the big thing is the foliage. I think. Oh sure, you have to like dumb it down 100. Yeah. Um, percent On the PC related news with Sony stuff. So this was also reported by PC Gamer. Uh, Last of Us Part Two job listing asked for PC, DX12, and N- NVIDIA experience. What? What'd you say? Uh, I'll read again. Last of Us Part Two job listing asked for PC, DX12, and NVIDIA. Oh, experience. DX12. I heard Dick Swell. <laughs> Twelve Dick <disc> experience. <laughs> PS2, Dick Swell, and PC. <laughs> I'd play that. Dick Swell. <laughs> 612 and NVIDIA experience. My porn name, Dick Swell. <laughs> How about Lil Richard Creep? Swell. Lil Creep and Dick Swell. <laughs> uh, well, Gavin, uh, this is from PC Gamer, <laughs> Fraser Brown. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh, boy. Fraser Brown. Fraser Brown writes, uh, PlayStation developer Naughty Dog posted a job listing for a graphics programmer recently that has people wondering if Sony's giving up another exclusive. The role is attached to The Last of Us Part Two, which the has only... are attached to balls... Last of Us Part Two. The role is attached to Last of Us Part Two, which has only been announced on PS4, but the requirements and skills section lists several things specific to PC. So another, this is an actual job listing. Does this mean that they're porting it to PC? Seems you know weird, unlikely, but also with the whole Horizon stuff, uh, is Sony kind of gearing up PS5 with like having these PC ports as an option? I I think so. It is maybe possible. But I also think the other big possibility is that the PlayStation 5 is just a lot more like a PC mm. than ever before. Component-wise, they just need people that are familiar because that stuff is in the PS5. Or, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes more sense. Um, so, yeah, that's that, that's two you know um, two ideas that, that have spawned from this where it's like, does this mean they're porting more likely to PC or they just need people to work in the architecture? Tell me Horizon Zero Dawn is going to be even brighter. <laughs> it will no for sure when that comes to pc yeah people are gonna be able to just max it out completely and oh see, yeah like, high the texture mods full specs shit. oh yeah take a day to load even on your <laughs> solid state drive that'd be dope though to really see that on pc like that'd be awesome yeah um gavin have you watched the new doom eternal trailer yeah that was good i'm gonna watch it because i have not seen it oh really yes. i mean you, uh picture in your mind what you think this trailer is it's that it's that <laughs> Which, I don't know why the graphics this part like so slightly bug me, but I don't know what. You think it is. the graphics they, they bug you? Yeah, just in this first part, I can't p- pick out what it is. Hmm. But it's something that bugs me. I love the idea of the whole hellscape coming to Earth. Right. I think that was the original Doom Two. That was the idea, yeah. right? I think. 
Also, these graphics have not improved a smidgen from the last one. I'm and it that. doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. I think on PC they'll probably take advantage of yeah. it. Yeah. And that's what I appreciate. My PC can run this. And if it can't, like, what was it called? Rage? Bullshit. Yeah, Rage 2. I'll be so pissed. Well, I think this is still releasing on Switch when it comes out, too. So they're yeah. optimizing this engine to really work on a bunch of platforms. Yeah. And that's the thing, too. I don't need a prettier Doom than the last Doom. That was fine. But yeah, this yep. looks exactly like it. Got that robot. That voice actor gets work. <laughs> hmm. Also, I am excited for the music again. Yeah. Last time around was fantastic. They're gonna. I imagine they're gonna lean hard into what they started with the last one with the the music, the yeah. the atmosphere, just like taking advantage of this being a fucking dude game. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I noticed when he melee, there was like a shockwave rippled off of the left huh. hook. I think there's gonna be a lot of more in this game. Oh, something I thought was weird. I think right there, or maybe in a second. I'll reverse back to it, too. Uh, somebody says, you're just a human, in which, in my head, I'm like, that guy's human? I thought he wasn't. But no, I didn't think he was either. I thought he was the Doom Slayer, and I thought the oh, Doom God. Slayer wasn't a human. No. Yeah, I think you're right, because in the first Doom or the remake, uh, they bring you back to life. There's some kind of ritual, yeah. so... Um, yeah, that is that is interesting. I don't know story-wise yeah. what they're trying to... I, I would be curious to see if they say, so, like, he's human. What if, what if, throw this out there, although he's a bit white to do it, what if that's Adam? Well, interesting. So, like, maybe the original human was just tough as fucking balls. <laughs> he's, I think we're, Adam and Eve originally supposed to be, like, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh... Angels or... Like, never die or whatever, so that would maybe explain why he can just live forever. Oh, interesting. So that would be an interesting, like, do we get a female Doom Slayer? Yeah, they are showing a smidge. Are these cutscenes for the, do you think for the trailer they're taking liberties showing you the character? Because in that, in the first Doom, it's really just your first person perspective for all the different cutscenes. Right. You're you're seeing it all happen. Are they being more cinematic, you think, with this? Because there's there's times where they pull out and kind of show you stuff. I don't know. Which I'm not mad at, but uh, that was kind of a thing that they they really focused on with that first Doom. I could see it being just for the trailer uh, or stuff like that. I could see them pulling out for, but it does seem in general like, like the last one. Like when they do a story bit, they do it quickly gotcha. and just get you back into the game. So I don't really see them taking forever with this stuff. Yep. I cannot wait. Oh, boy. It's going to be fun. But human, that seems like, don't you load yourself into a cannon and shoot yourself out of that cannon at some point? Like, I don't <laughs> I care what do. kind of Doomslayer armor you got on. I'm <laughs> I'm melted at that point. <laughs> so and he, he, this guy doesn't even have his biceps covered. Right, yeah. Although if I had those those guns, I would not be covering those biceps either. Guns, sir. Those are f- <laughs> those are cannons. Those are uh, howitzers. I don't know if a cannon's bigger than a howitzer or... I don't know. I won't quote you on that. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to see uh, a rail get gun. your takes on that. Yeah. Um, uh, do you know much about the Hunt Showdown? Uh, Have you played this? Yes. It looks really cool. I haven't played it because I don't have a PC or anything capable of running it, but apparently yeah. it's getting a PS4 release and uh, Xbox cross-play is planned. Sounds pretty cool. It is a cool game. Do you kind of know how it works? Uh, seemingly, yeah. So it's like a team-based thing or you can be two people or, or single, but yeah. it's like a bunch of teams playing for one goal. Right. It's trying to find the... Is it the loot or also kill the monster? Or vice you got to kill the monster and you get the loot for killing it. And there's not that many teams in the game. I want to say maybe there's like your team plus like maybe three other teams. Mm. Uh, the health system is very oppressive and it's hard to keep your... Like, like your bits of health, your maximum health can get destroyed oh. due to certain reasons and factors. So like when you're going into, it's not like a, like other battle royales where like, you know, you're just healing back to full after I each see. battle. You may not, you're coming in wounded. Um, and then you can have people like in there fighting the monster and you just go in at the end and kill them. Or... I love that idea. Cause once you kill the monster, there's some kind of announcement where everyone else is aware. Yes. The monster's dead. It. Yeah. And then it's just a, uh, you're just teams picking off each other to find that yeah. loot. This is one of those games though. I think was hampered by going into area access too early because it was a buggy garbage dump. Mm. It was absolutely like the reflections on the water made no sense. <laughs> like it was, it was 
bad when it launched, and now it's gotcha. a, a good game. And if it launched like that, right? I wonder if they yeah. they went too early into earlier access. But so it's yeah. a Crytek game, so it's using the Crytek engine. Cry engine for whatever reason. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, so the IGN, uh, Chris Priceman just kind of breaks down the details. Crytek has announced a release date and future plans for Hunt Showdown on PlayStation 4, which includes crossplay with the Xbox One version, which is uh, pretty dope. Yeah. Uh, the competitive bounty hunting shooter will be available on PS4 from February uh, 18, 2020. The physical version of the Xbox version will be released on the same day. Uh, Crytek says the plan is to add crossplay between the Xbox One and PC versions, or sorry, PS4 versions of the Hunt Showdown. There will also be a new map, solo PV mode, live events, and outfit customization. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I guess, depending on the price, I'm really stoked because I remember seeing footage of this when it first came out. Visually, this art, it caught my eye because it looked really it's pretty. cool. It's pretty. It's in like the, I don't know if all the maps are this way, but it's like the south. It's like this weird kind of um, just, uh, you know, muddy, swampy kind of areas. And then you have the horrible monsters you fight. It's cool. Yeah. It's also hard. <laughs> like, That's what it seemed like. You watch the people that are about. really good at it and they're still yeah, struggling. struggling. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I can't wait to play that on console. Uh, we have uh, some Nintendo Switch news. Metro Redo Redux is coming out. Redo, <laughs> yeah, is that Redo Redux? It's Redux. Get that X out of there, man. Reduction. We've reduced this game to Switch. Does this uh, right? <laughs> Does this uh, the fact that it's coming out on Switch and running on Switch hardware? Does that surprise you? Is that still to be expected? It's an older PC game, older yeah. console game. Not really. I mean, these games were pretty, uh, but they're doable. They're also small rooms. The whole thing's in tight corridors. It's not like, yeah, the new Metro, impossible. This, ah. Yeah, the new one's open world, but yeah, this is not. Yeah, this is pretty doable. Nice. Yeah, it seems like all the old PC games are finding their way on on Switch, which I'm not mad at. I really bet that doesn't even look that much worse. Yeah? (laughs) At least in like console, like PS3, Xbox 360, like that quality. Yeah. It's it's going to be slightly worse to be. Nice. We got that. Another possible Switch game is a Bioshock collection. This is still a rumor, but uh, the Bioshock, all three, and then your ability to buy them individually, them all coming to Switch very soon. Cool. Uh, right? Yeah. No. And this is another older PC game coming to Switch. Are they going to uh, bring Infinite? Apparently, yeah. So Joe Scrabbles of IGN writes, the Taiwanese ratings board may have outed a Switch release for Bioshocks 1, 2, and Infinite, and the collection compri- compromising all three, or comprising rather all three. Reported by Loot Pots, Bioshock Remastered, Bioshock 2 Remastered, Bioshock Infinite, the Complete Edition, and Bioshock the Collection have all been rated for Switch. I hope more people play 2. This 2 was really good. I need to get back into it. Nobody played it. Yeah, yeah, I own it. I have the collection on on PS4, but I need to get back and play that. Uh, Especially like Minerva's Den, which is the DLC of Bioshock 2, right? It's like a separate level. From 3? From no, from two. Uh, there was this. Minerva's there's Den? yeah, Minerva's Den is like a. It's a separate DLC that was just really renowned. Oh. Um, but the uh, the devs who eventually made Gone Home, they all came from that team that oh, worked on Minerva's really? Den. Really interesting. And Mer- Minerva's Den was just like DLC for Bioshock too. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, but that's also that's tied to that. And that's one reason why I always went to go back and play it. But I guess when it initially was announced, I didn't like that it wasn't that original Bioshock team. But uh, I just didn't give them enough credit. But really, yeah. they actually uh, created and that was a lot of people's problem with it. It wasn't right. the original team. It was, but it without was, playing, it, it was also the same universe. People wanted something different than Rapture again. We'd already been to Rapture. I guess I did want the same world, or I didn't mind the same world. But I, in my mind, I was prejudiced. Where it's like I wanted that same team, yeah. but uh, I didn't give them, you know, the benefit of a doubt, and it actually came out dope. Apparently, yeah. I mean, for me, it was I didn't want the same game, so I was done with it. But then our buddy Billy. Uh, it was just like dude, but the gameplay though. Gotcha. I'm yeah. like, what? I don't. I honestly didn't play Bioshock One for the gameplay. I didn't like the gameplay. Yeah, I didn't mind it. I liked the the ability to use the environment. You had your electricity, your yeah. water stuff. The 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 uh, the big daddies were terrifying, but yeah. the story was maybe more cool. what kept me going along the way. Yeah. And that boss at the end was just horseshit. Horseshit. It was just such such a traditional boss. You know, after all that stuff has had been said and done. Then they just give you the standard boss. I'm just like, come on, man. I think I told you I rage quit outside the door to the boss. Oh, really? <laughs> I was because towards the end, I was in this section that like the enemies keep spawning, but the ammo wasn't. So I was looking for more ammo because I was just out of ammo. And uh. every scrap of ammo I would find, I was using up because enemies kept As spawning. You're around. And I went through that like final bullshit hallway section where you're defending the little sister. And it's just it's just horse shit. And I got to the last door, and I saved, and I said, "Fuck this game." And uh, I think I was talking to my buddy about 
like the game and I told him like kind of where I was and what yeah. I had just done. He goes, you should go through that <laughs> You're door. You're knocking on the door of the box. <laughs> like go, go just go through the door. I'm like, no, I don't want to. He's like, no, you should go through the door. <laughs> like I didn't know I was at the last boss. Yeah. It doesn't tell you you're ramping up for it. But. Yeah, it's a the first one's a classic for sure. You know what? Yeah. There's a level that's burning my brain. If I if I if I were able to like ever just kind of give a top ten or some kind of co- compilation of my favorite levels, which is hard to do uh, out of uh, every game, but like with Bioshock, there is that. It's not even a level. It's more of just like a a little area. Um, area. But it's yeah. this. It's you. Your character in the beginning is for, is, as soon as you get the shotgun. It's the first time you get the shotgun. They turn all the lights. It's just that one spotlight, and out of the darkness, all these different splashes come out, and you just have to keep like going around in circles right. or turning around looking for them. I love that the how tense it was, that the way they build that scene. That's always just like burning my brain. But for so for that alone, I love Bioshock. But everything else is on point. I want to say that bit was in the demo, and it mm. got me fucking jacked. Yeah, <laughs> to play that game. Nice. Yeah, Gavin, that's it for uh, this this week. Uh, I feel like we're forgetting something. What was the thing I sent you earlier? Um, well, you sent me the uh, oh, maybe it the was dying the delay light for mm-hmm. dying light. Yeah, yep. yep. Oh yeah, I'm, uh, there was a speak. Of, there was a game that came out that the internet blew its fucking lid for. Was that Goku or the the, the oh. Dragon Ball Z? Uh, See, I'm not a fan of Dragon Ball Z at all, so yeah, I just I disregarded. But I know people are loving that new the newer pe- game. People are digging this game. Kakarot. It, yeah, it's like hard enough. It seems so from someone who has never watched Dragon Ball Z uh, sober, and when I mean. <laughs> Not watched it sober. I mean, on teetering on blackout. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it seems it looks like it's just replaying the story of Dragon Ball. Okay, which I can't do. Like there was there was so many cutscenes. Every time I'd look over, like I was playing Forager, and I'd look over and just see more cutscenes. I wasn't <laughs> seeing gameplay. Well, in the Watching the cartoon as a kid or little bits of it, they're notorious for as the as the dudes get ready to fight, they're just like just flying up in the air, just screaming, getting ready yeah. to actually fight each other. So one of the cutscenes are similar to that. Yeah. So it's not they've done the there was a Dragon Ball Z fighter that came out what a year ago that mm-hmm. was really big, but this is like an actual yeah. storyline uh, single player campaign. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, also Dragon Ball Z uh, fighter context for fighters Z is because a it's a game that people have been praying for for years Mm -hmm. uh it was also by uh a developer that is out of their mind right now just (laughs) making some of the best fighting games out there like the previous game they made in that visual style was just stupid good Mm. and then on top of that it was kind of filling that slot that marvel versus capcom was filling previously i see so it was this triple threat yeah that the fighting game community desperately needed gotcha so even though if you're a casual player or you're a casual like fan of fighting games or dragon ball z and you watch it and it just looks like there's seven gokus on screen at <laughs> once right this is uncomparable like so at least when footage. i watch marvel versus capcom i know that one's hulk <laughs> right and that one's the succubus lady that's constantly throwing out projectiles and it's annoying to watch. Uh, yeah, I mean, look at the footage. Uh, it looks like the cartoon, just like a really cool version of the cartoon. Yeah. It'd be, um, it'd be really nice if it. they could have an abridged version. Uh, if you ever watch, I'll let you show you after the podcast ends. Mm. But uh, yeah. yeah I'm just, I was never a fan of Dragon Ball Z. For some reason, it just never um, hit me. But like, oh, that's right. My, he does the. <laughs> Uh. Sorry, there was this, there was this one scene I do remember from the show where they're fighting this like super powerful guy, and it's this dumb looking thing where he just puts his fingers like this and he just fucking nukes him, <laughs> and then he just keeps nuking him. Nice. And like it should be dumb, but you're just like, dude. <laughs> See, on paper, this should I should like this. I should like yeah. this as a kid, but all my friends were into it growing up. I never liked it. Yeah. Something about it. It's definitely one of those. It's a hard like you gotta like anime to watch this show. Yeah, I kind of lightly like anime. Right. I did, I dabble back and forth with it, but yeah. Like I like Even Akira, I'll just kind of like fast forward through the to the end where he's just like freaking out and turning into a weird monster. I like the end part. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oof. Shots fired, I know. You said that on the internet. And, <laughs> and then I'll watch the Animatrix once a month because I love the Animatrix. But. <laughs> the Animatrix was fun. But yeah. All the art styles, especially yeah, like dope. the one with the skater. 
I love that one. That one's that one's one of my favorites. Love the one, and I just love the Matrix universe too. So yeah. Yeah, you still need to watch the Batman version of the Animatrix. Yeah, I think I tried to get into it, but uh, I rented it. Possibly, I rented the Halo one. I didn't finish the Halo. Oh, one. gotcha. But uh, yeah. Well, if you ever you. want to try the Batman again, I it was one of those ones in Blockbuster going out of business. I was uh. like nabbed <laughs> it's a dollar or whatever right not that anyone has a dvd player anymore <laughs> <laughs> all right well, we should Kevin. probably get out of here but send it there yeah where can they find you online you can find me on twitter at drunk devs nice you can find us on uh twitter as well plastic heart pod on twitter that is it for us this week we'll see you next week bye